Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, got a little gunsmithing video for you. We are going to be talking about some awesome Brownells Acroglass hacks. Acroglass is a super useful component and it is used in a wide variety of different gunsmithing applications. Speaking of gunsmithing, if you guys want to learn more about firearms technology and gunsmithing, uh, you want higher education in that regard, check out SDI. Uh, they've got some great gunsmithing programs. They accept GI Bill, great group of people. So Acroglass is typically used in a variety of different stock repairs. We're going to cover some hacks and get into one little project here. I've got a very loose Mauser broom handle stock. Um, it's got a lot of play. Listen to that. Up and down, side to side. I mean, the bracket's loose, the stock is loose. Um, there's movement of the stock within the, within the uh, bracket itself. Uh, we're going to glass all this in, get it nice and tight, fit the bracket, and we're actually going to re-blue this bracket too. It's gotten in the white and, uh, and really messed up here, so we're going to re-blue this as well, I'll show you how all that is done. And, uh, you know, Acroglass is a really, really handy substance. Um, it's used for stock repairs, but you don't have to use it for just stock repairs. Um, you can use it for a variety of different things. Uh, primarily, I use it for stock repairs, but if you're going to put screws in the wall or if you're going to drive a screw in, you can coat it in Acroglass and it'll really give that screw some staying power. So let's say that you're adding like a reinforced door jam or something like for added home security and you're going to add some long screws. Coat those screws in Acroglass, drive them in, works really great for that. Uh, another great hack is things on your boat. Uh, if you've got a fiberglass T-top uh, center console or something like that and you want to add a bottle opener or a piece of hardware and you've got to drill through, uh, you know, the, the fiberglass in order to get the screws to start, uh, you can coat those screws in Acroglass and not only will it make the screws watertight against the T-top, it'll also help those screws from backing out and uh, prevent the fiberglass from splitting or tearing or anything like that. So Acroglass can be used for a lot of different things. Uh, you can also add color to acro glass. You can add wood fibers to acro glass. So we're going to get into this broom handle repair. I'll show you a couple of stocks. Uh, this is a stock off a 9.3 by 57 uh, Husqvarna Mauser. We used acro glass and added uh, our wood fibers in there to uh, reinforce the tang on here, uh, you know, to keep the tang from splitting. That's a common area that breaks on these stocks. Uh, so they can be used for minor stock repairs all the way up through major stock repairs. Um, Mark Novak took my Kamalotter stock and actually used a series of brass pins to uh, pull the stock split together. So you can actually use glass uh, to help reinforce a stock split in conjunction with these brass pins um, that Brownell sells, okay? They're just threaded brass pins and these things are really, really gnarly and they don't react in any odd way to the wood. So if you've got a bad split and you've got to pull that stock together, you can use, you can pre-drill and then use these brass pins and reinforce everything with acro glass. That's one way you can do it and you'll see that repair, it's excellent. If you wanna see that process in full detail, go over to Amble Gunsmithing and check out Mr. Mark Novak's channel and you'll see how he brought my Kamalotter back to life. Another thing that Mark Novak did on my Kamalotter, we actually uh, machined a chamber sleeve for my Kamalotter and that entire sleeve is set in place with a whole bunch of acro glass. Once that stuff cures, it is rock solid. It is absolutely fantastic stuff. Brownells also makes a product called Steel Bed. Now we're not gonna be using this in today's video, but the Steel Bed is primarily done uh, when you really wanna get a good solid mounting surface in a stock for an action. Say you wanna do a full length bedding, that's typically where Steel Bed is going to come in. Or if you've got a really gnarly repair that maybe involves a metal bracket or something that's cracked or split, a uh, steel bed can be used for a variety of those repairs as well. Uh, it is a gray color. Uh, it's kind of a primer gray color once it's mixed and it sets. And you can paint over it. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into this because I want to be able to demonstrate uh, what we did to correct this. I actually have two broom handles, both with reproduction uh, stocks. Both of them are wobbly. Now, I've already repaired one of them, so I kind of know what to do. I'm going to take you through what I did to get the other one to fit tight, and we'll kind of go through this, have some fun. I'll show you how I use the acro glass, and I'll be able to pop this other one apart and show you uh, the finished product, and we'll go out and shoot one of these Mausers at the end of the video here. So let's get into it, have a little fun with some acro glass. I'll show you a few hacks. Let's do it. 
All right, we're gonna pull the screw out on the stock here for starters and just see what we're working with. Now, the bracket is very loose on the gun itself and the bracket is loose against the stock. So we've got a couple of areas of fitment here uh, that we've sort of got to play with. All right, we've got a real basic kind of machine screw there. This is a repro stock. This is not the original one. Um, so I don't really have a problem modifying this because this is a repro and because if I'm going to shoot the gun, you, you definitely don't want this thing walking around on you. So we got the bracket off. I'm going to go ahead and um, pull the stock out of the way. We're going to focus on getting the metal works figured out here before we go glassing in the, uh, the tang of the stock. What we're going to do first though is we're going to check without the stock on there, we're just going to take the, the butt of the pistol and slide that uh, bracket in there and let's look at it. So we've got a good amount of play in there and I've got a pretty solid idea. So there's not a whole lot of fore and aft play, it's mainly just side to side right there. So I think I know what I can do to fix this up here. We're just going to clamp this up in the, uh, in the vise. It ain't got to be stupid tight. We just want to keep it from moving around a little bit. And I'm going to grab a hammer and I'm going to peen the side of this right here on the sides like this. We're just going to drop in some uh, divots. And what it's doing is it's raising that metal. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to cheat a little higher this time on this side. All right, we can see where it's raising the metal pretty good. All right, those divots that we added, it raised it on the lower part and then on this side a little bit more towards the upper part, raising it right here along the back. And what we're going to do is just grab a, uh, you can use die cam. I'm just going to use a little Sharpie here. And we're going to brighten this up along this axis here, along here, okay, just like this. Fill everything in with pin, okay. Okay, just like that. I wouldn't paint the whole thing just to see, okay. Now we're going to slide it in and see where it rubs off and see if we got any high spots. We're going to dress those down with a file. So let me, uh, let me back out and grab the uh, gun and let's check it. better fit. A <clears throat> little tight. All right, I can see I've got a couple of areas that have tried to brighten up there. Let's go ahead and run that in one more time. <laughs> Gosh, that is a much better fit right there, guys. No side-to-side -side play. That's a very tight fit, and it's not so tight that it won't slide off easy. Man, and I dare I say, ladies and, and germs, that I, I really don't think I have to do a whole lot to that. There's absolutely no side-to-side -side play in that and no up-and-down play. That is, that is just a wonderful fit. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is clean the marker off, and I'm going to re-blue this entire bracket. I'm going to show you a really cool way to uh, re-blue small pieces. Uh, I'm going to use some Brownells Oxford Blue. Let's go ahead and accomplish that so we can move on to the acrid glass portion. There's our Oxford Blue. I've just got a big old Q-tip in there. Hopefully you can see that. There you go. All right, I'm going to grab just some of this uh, Brownells degreaser. All right, and we're going to just spray this off, and that's also going to clean off our uh, marker it's on there. Okay. Easy enough. Little degreaser. All right. And this is super simple. I mean, I'm not suggesting you uh, re-blue your your grandpa's Sweet 16 Browning A5 this way, but for a, for a Chinese broom handle uh, repro stock, this will be fine. So this is a leaf spring. We don't want to get that too hot. I'm going to pull this down and just stick this scribe in here just to kind of pull it away a little bit and draw some of the heat away. And what we're going to do is I am going to heat this up. I'm primarily concerned about where this is in the white really bad. And this is, this is the super quick and dirty, lazy way to do it. I'm going to heat it up a little bit. I mean, don't, uh, don't burn it to smithereens, guys. Uh, 
going to take this giant swab coated in Oxford blue. I'm just going to touch this up a little bit here. I'm sure you're not going to require a lot of demonstration of this part. I'm going to take this thing over the sink and rinse it off with some water. Okay. All right, so rinsed her off. A little oil. Very nice. Blacked up quite nicely. Look at that. I'd say that's a pretty good looking result for just a quick little touch up. What do you think? Not bad. And just a couple of little peen marks. That's about the only uh, sign that we were there. Okay. Not bad for a quick little fix on a $100 uh, Chinese repro stock. Uh, a nice quick fix and we didn't have to modify the original pistol. All right, I'm going to dry this off a little bit better and we're going to coat this in release agent and let's pay some special attention to the stock. Uh, allow me to just reposition and we'll have a look at that. Brownells Acroglass release agent. You definitely want to make sure when you're dealing with, you know, um, Acroglass that you use a nice healthy coat of release agent so that nothing sticks too bad. I'm going overkill here, but I'm just doing that for demonstrative purposes. All right, so we got our metal components coated in release agent, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing to our screw. But first, oh, we forgot to blue the screw. That's okay. That might be an alloy screw, guys. Yep, that's an, oh no, it's bluing. We're just going to blue the head of that screw just for aesthetics. You get the idea, guys. Just for just to clean that up, we're going to blue that just like that. I'm going to do the same thing, oil that little guy up, and then we're going to coat it release agent. Let's grab the stock and we'll move on to the acrid glass portion. The idea of putting the glass here is so that no movement can be made between the bracket and the stock, but also to prevent the bracket under recoil forces from actually impacting, uh, gaining movement and traction and impacting any area on this wood and causing a crack or a split, uh, which would definitely not be good, especially on an original unit. Uh, this is a repro, but on an original, yeah, <laughs> not good. Uh, we do have a couple of potential areas that we could run into a mechanical bonding issue, so we want to be careful. Uh, there's a track back here. You can see where I'm running this in this area. Look here this whole area. We're going to dam this up with putty and this is the area where our leaf spring actually pivots back and forth where the hook for the receiver on the pistol uh, actuates. So we're just going to take some modeling clay and fill in this area with modeling clay. I know it's hard for you to see but guys I'm just I'm just damming it up with modeling clay. It's not rocket science. But anything that you're glassing you want to definitely keep uh, in mind to watch out for those mechanical bonds, right? You, you don't want to pro pro provide a situation where you go to glass something together and you can't get it back apart because the glass has formed a bond that you can't do anything about. <laughs> That's not good, okay? So we'll wipe off the excess. Just like this. That'll be just fine, okay? And a, a little bit of modeling clay will go a long way. I like black because I can see it really easy. All right. And now where we do want a mechanical bond is along the whole axis of the inside of the stock. We want that glass to creep in, okay, and form little bonds that provide a homogeneous and, uh, you know, total surface for the glass to adhere to other than just some smooth surface. We want it to actually grab. We're going to glass this bottom section first. And then once it cures, we're going to pull it apart and glass the other side. But the process for glassing each side is absolutely identical. Okay, so what I'm going to do is after we glass this thing, uh, I'm going to pull apart the other stock, which is ready, and show you the result. That way we can switch right to it. It'll be really easy for you guys. I'm just going to take a drill and come in here and open up a bunch of little divots. And hopefully you can see this.
All right, that looks pretty good. We don't have to worry about damming up the hole where the screw is going to come through because when we put the bracket back on, we're going to run the screw in it. And because we've coated the bracket and the screw in a release agent, that won't be a problem. It's going to push out all the excess and then we'll wipe away all the excess. But you can see, you know, these little divots are, you know, fairly deep and there's a lot of them. And that's all going to get filled in with glass. And that's going to reinforce this whole area. And I'll show you how we do that. Let me reposition the piece and the camera and we'll go ahead and glass this puppy up. First, uh, we want to make sure that our glass doesn't remain clear. So what we're going to do, I've got a section of an old Mauser stock. This is walnut. Okay, I'm going to take this walnut and I'm going to grind it uh, with a file and I'm going to get some walnut shavings and I'm going to add it to the glass mixture and that's going to give us our desired color to kind of blend in this walnut color. Okay, four parts resin to one part hardener. It doesn't have to be a super precise thing. Just eyeball it. Okay, resin. A little bit of hardener up in there. That'll do. All right, we're going to mix a roux. Mixing our wood shavings in there to get about the right color we want. Man, I don't think I could ask for <laughs> a better color to match. You'll see that as we apply it, but it's a nice brown color. Uh, the thing about acro glass that's nice is that uh, you can color match uh, both with dyes and powders, uh, different pigments of various types, whatever you want to do. So there's our nice, nice color there. Okay, once you mix your uh, acro glass, you got a little bit of time to work. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play around and go make a cup of coffee or anything. Once you pour this stuff, you, uh, you want to go ahead and apply it and get the piece setting up. Now, uh, I'm not going to demonstrate the two phases of doing this because I am going to be bedding in a couple of different steps here. Uh, you guys get the idea. This is mainly to show you sort of in, in form and function, you know, how this stuff is applied and how it works and we're gonna you know through the uh, the glory of movie magic we're gonna be able to look at the other stock which is already set up overnight and we're gonna be able to see how our repairs from yesterday came together where I used the exact same type of idea uh, to perform the repairs yesterday now don't worry about the glass going down in the hole uh, there a little bit of hardened acro glass from the other day uh, that won't be a problem because the screw when we push it up through there, it's gonna, it's gonna squeeze all that glass out of there. All right, we're gonna get some of that in there like that. Kind of coat that. Why do I feel like Martha Stewart? Maybe, what, what would it be, Martha Stewart or possibly, uh, what, what, who would I get compared to all the time? Old uh, Pretty Trees guy, what's his name? Bob Ross. <laughs> we're just gonna lay some pretty little glass in here. Yeah, real nice, just like that. Oh, it's just such a such a nice little little bit of glass there. We're just gonna lay our little bracket in here. Yeah. Oh, what a nice little bracket. All right, in all seriousness. Seriousness. Okay. All right, we got a little bit of splooge in there. It's okay. I'm gonna come up up from the bottom with our screw, which everything's coated in glass and everything is hit with our release agent. I'm gonna go ahead and just get our screw in there. I'm doing this at a weird angle just for demonstrative purposes. All right, you can see that it's pushing up through there. It's not a big deal. some in there like that see we sort of make a seam right there just like that and I believe guys that that color matched up really really nice okay so we're gonna allow this to kind of see uh, seep and set and this is gonna be glassed in real nice and there was already a lot of a gap right there I mean so that glass is gonna fill in any gaps that might result now we see a gap here on the front that could be addressed as well in a very similar fashion, but because the angle, I mean, I couldn't drop glass in there and expect it to sit. I've also got to watch for mechanical bonds. 
So depending on the position of the repair and the position of the way you're going to glass this, you'll need to kind of let things set up properly and sort of do it in stages depending on the piece. Okay, so in this particular case, we're going to allow this to set up really well. I might take just a scotch of, I've got a little bit of glass left here. I might just drop a little bit right there. Just like that. A little bit right in there. Let that kind of seep in. Yeah, it's trying to it's trying to take a little more. Let that kind of seep in a little bit. <clears throat> Want that to get down in there just a little bit. You guys get the idea. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wipe away the excess here. We're just trying to make sure it fills in. Kind of covers up any imperfections and just reinforces this really, really well. That's what we're looking for. Let that seep in there for just a moment here. I'll wipe away the excess. And because we've already glassed one of these stocks, I'm going to pull the other one apart and let's have a look at the cured result, shall we? All right, a little movie magic. This is the one that we set up yesterday. This is a different stock. Um, but the exact same bedding process, exact same bluing that we did on the bracket, that came together nice. Same painting. All right, and you guys are seeing this for the first time just like we are, so let's see if I was successful here. All right, we're going to drop this screw. Okay, we had a little bit of glass seepage there. That's okay, it's moving. I'd rather it be a tight fit anyway. So our screw is a moving. We'll clean up any uh, any chance uh, seepage there that we need to clean up. It's not a problem. All right. <clears throat> well, <laughs> the only negative aspect that occurred was that when we were trying to get this bracket off, we, we chipped our stock with that back there. If that's okay, I got a little pen. I can color that in, and that won't be a problem. Let's get our putty out of here, out of the channel. Look at that. And that modeling clay is probably uh, still good enough to add back to our little block there, and we can probably uh, reuse that. No problem. Most of our clay out of there, I think that's looking pretty good. So we can see that the glass, uh, you know, set up exactly where we wanted it to. We did not wind up with a mechanical bond. All right, we got a good fit on our bracket. The glass filled in really nice. I'm gonna flip this thing around. And guys, this stock is delicate. There's a lot of thin pieces on here. Uh, there was our initial bedding. You can see where we, you know, really got all that glass in there. That filled in beautifully. Nice reinforcement there in the tang area. Nice bed of uh, glass built up there. We could have removed more of this wood, but man, this wood is so awfully soft. You can see where we chipped off a little piece. I can fix that later. But all in all, not bad. I think we you know, got a pretty nice fitment there. Got our bracket tightened. I'm gonna reinstall all this and clean off this screw. Let's put it back on our Mauser and see how it fits and let's test fire it. <laughs> All right, guys, I think she's going to live on to fight another day. We hope you enjoyed these Acroglass hacks. Every gun shop worth their salt, even if you're a hobbyist, you got to have some Acroglass laying around. Very indispensably useful stuff. Have a great day. Definitely like to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Uh, go over and pick up a t-shirt on Ballistic Inc. Uh, go pick up a man can. All the funds we earn go right back into supporting the channel taking on projects like this. Have a great day. See you next time.